I'm Ian Davidson and I'm a consultant psychiatrist and the Royal College of Psychiatrists Autism Champion. Uh, autistic people have difficulty with what is known as conventional empathy in that they don't show their empathy and sympathy to people in a way that the general population or call neurotypical usually do. That does not mean that autistic people do not care about others or about their feelings. And if you talk to autistic people, they will say they do care and they try and show that care, but often in non-conventional ways. They often try and do something practical to help, um, but also can struggle because emotions can overwhelm them and they therefore don't know what to help and therefore being able to suggest to them what might help would be useful. Uh, autistic people have a range of sensitivities and a range of challenges and issues with social interaction. This does not mean that autistic people are antisocial. Many autistic people would like to be able to cope in company and in, relax and enjoy themselves, but they frequently get anxious. Autistic people do find groups more challenging and therefore often get tired more easily and so they will sometimes avoid groups. But that does not mean that they always wish to be on their own. Autistic people do have to be careful about how much time they spend with other people and how much time they have to recharge the battery on their own because it can be exhausting mixing with people. Historically, autism was first identified mainly in males as children and often with learning disabilities. As time has gone on, there's increasing knowledge that boys and girls are autistic and that therefore adult men and adult women are autistic. We do not know at the present time what is the male to female ratio in autism. It used to be thought it was as high as 10 to 1, more recently it's been thought to be 4 to 1. Increasingly though, the ratio is coming down and we therefore can't be certain what rate it will finally reach. Autistic people are people, and like every person, they are different to the person around them. So if you, the cliche is, if you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. That's the same as if you've met one neurotypical person, you've met one neurotypical person. Autistic people are people, therefore they will have the normal range of human traits, issues, strengths, and weaknesses. Their autism means that they think slightly differently and they deal with things in slightly different ways which can be a challenge when they're faced with a world which is set up and designed for neurotypical people. But the way in which they each have got different strengths, different needs, different aspirations, and the different ways they've developed to cope with those will mean that they are completely individual. Um, autistic people have a wide variety of relationships as do neurotypical people. Autistic people generally have a smaller network of social relationships than neurotypical people. Um, they can be very good close friends, but they tend to have one major friend at a time rather than lots of major friends. In terms of emotional and intimate relationships, autistic people can be very successful in intimate relationships. They can be successful uh, as partners, they can be successful as parents, they can be successful as children, they can be successful successful in all of those roles. Uh, one of the greatest myths uh, is that vaccinations cause autism. Autism tends to present in children at or around the time when they first get vaccinated or when they first get infections, but there is no evidence that the infection or the autism or the vaccinations cause the autism. They simply happen at the same stage in people's lives. Autistic people, as a general rule, find it more difficult to describe their own emotional feelings to themselves as well as to other people. They do not tend to use conventional 
uh, non-verbal communication such as facial gestures, hand movements, body movements, to give a context to their emotions, which makes it very difficult for other people to pick up on their emotions so they can appear to have a reduced rate of emotions. In fact, most autistic people are just as emotional as most neurotypical people, but the way in which they present is different, but they know when they're having a good day and when they know when they're having a bad day, so they are fully able to experience sadness and happiness. One of the myths that came about was that because children, autistic children, do not tend to show typical childish imaginary play, that autistic people lack imagination or creativity. They don't lack imagination or creativity, but again, because the thinking is different and the way they address things are different, their imagination and creativity can come out in different ways to what's common for neurotypicals. So it was not picked up on standard screening. We now know that most autistic people are just as creative and just as able to imagine as neurotypical people, but they do it in a different way. That can have advantages in a range of situations because autistic people can often find solutions and answers that neurotypical people don't find. But it also means that sometimes the way they are talking about things doesn't fit neatly into the way that neurotypicals fit talk about things, which can cause confusion. Autistic people generally, as said previously, do not tend to have very big social networks. They can, however, and do successfully work in teams. Within a team, they usually do best when the team is task focused. So when they're doing something as part of a team for a purpose, for example, playing in a football team, for example, working on an IT project, uh, for example, um, coming up with a new way of redesigning something. They work very well in that environment. What they don't tend to work well in is the social chit chat part of the team. What they don't tend to be good at is the social secretary part of the team and organizing social events and attending social events. So within the team, they have a very valuable role, but they will not cover all the roles that a team typically covers. Um, autistic people, as a general rule, tend to use less facial gesture and less body movement as non-verbal communication. This can make them appear to have more flattened effects compared to neurotypicals who will be using more of that. It does not mean that they can't uh, have a sense of humour. Most autistic people have a good and broad sense of humour, but because their thinking is different that may not always be a conventional sense of humour. But again, it varies enormously between one autistic person and another as to what things they find funny and what things they find amusing. When they do smile, they can smile just as appropriate as anyone else. But as said earlier, they are less inclined to smile. Sometimes autistic people, because they're aware they don't smile, will put on a false smile, which can appear um, wrong because they're smiling at the wrong times. Those sort of fixed facial expressions confuse people into thinking that people don't have feelings behind their face, but actually inside their head they're having all these thoughts and feelings.